Five bodies unearthed at former Hitler army base. Panama selects new president. Boeing faces new inquiry over 787 inspection doubts. Brazil floods kill at least 83, dozens remain missing. Japan and India reject Biden's description of them as xenophobic. French bakers make world's longest baguette. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It is Wednesday, May 8th, and here are your top stories. Exposement said on Monday, Polish prosecutors have ended an investigation into human skeletons found at a site where German dictator Adolf Hitler and other Nazi leaders spent time during World War II because the advanced decay made it impossible to determine the cause of death. The remains were found in February 24th at Wolf's Lair, which served as Hitler's chief headquarters from 1941 to 44, when the area was part of Germany. The compound of about 200 Nazi bunkers and military barracks hidden in deep wood was the site of the failed assassination attempt on Hitler by Colonel Klaus Stauffenberg on July 20, 1944. The site is now a tourist attraction. The spokesman for the prosecutor's office in nearby Kiedersen town, Daniel Berdovsky, said police officers secured the remains after they were found by a local group, Latibra, which searches for historical objects. A forensic medical expert examined them under the supervision of the prosecutor's office, which was trying to determine if manslaughter had occurred. Bradovsky told the Associated Press in an emailed statement that the investigation was discontinued in late March due to a lack of evidence that a crime had been committed. He added that at least several dozen years had passed. The investigation didn't address who the people might have been due to the passage of time and the advanced decay of the remains, and it was no longer possible to determine the cause of death. Just over six months ago, José Raúl Molino said he was practically retired from politics, yet he'll be Panama's president for the next five years. In a historic and tumultuous election, preliminary results put Molino on top to lead the normally sleepy Central American nation through a moment of political tension, historic migration, and a struggling economy. The 64-year-old lawyer, whose last position in politics was as Minister of Security in then-President Ricardo Martellini's 2009-2014 administration, was initially tapped by the popular former leader to be his running mate after Martellini's wife declined. But then Martinelli was disqualified from running after he w a sentence to more than 10 years in prison for a money laundering conviction. Molino took his place and ultimately won Sunday's presidential election with nearly 35% of the vote and a nine-point lead over his nearest opponent, after dodging constitutional challenges to his own candidacy. The president-elect got there with strong support from Martinelli, arguably the most important tool in Molino's campaign as he rode the fiery ex-leader's popularity to victory. Although lacking Martinelli's charisma, the economic boom seen under his ally pushed many voters to support Molino at a time that Panama's economy has lagged. The U.S. has opened a new inquiry into troubled jet firm Boeing, after the company told air safety regulators that it might not have properly inspected its 787 Dreamliner planes. The Federal Aviation Administration said it would look into whether staff had falsified records. It said Boeing was re-inspecting all 787 jets still on the manufacturing line. Boeing will be forced to develop an action plan to address concerns about planes already in service. According to a message seen by BBC News, it told staff internally last week that the misconduct had not created an immediate safety of flight issue. Already under intense scrutiny, this morning Boeing is the focus of yet another FAA investigation. The agency looking into whether the company actually completed required... It is the latest problem to erupt at Boeing since January, when an unused emergency exit door blew off a new 737 MAX 9 plane shortly after takeoff, thrusting its manufacturing and safety processes into the spotlight. The incident prompted the temporary grounding of dozens of planes and forced the firm to drastically slow production, while sparking increased regulatory oversight, criminal investigations, and other legal and financial troubles. In March, Chief Executive Dave Calhoun said he would be stepping down by the end of the year, becoming the most high-profile person to exit the company in the wake of the incident. Boeing has said it is working to reform its corporate culture to encourage people who see problems to speak out, with a more than 500% increase in reports from employees since January.
Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva asked Congress on Monday to recognize a state of public calamity for the heavy rains due to the heavy rains that have claimed at least 85 lives in the country's southmost state of Rio Grande do Sul. The state's civil defense authorities said more than 130 people are still missing after flooding that has affected more than two-thirds of the nearly 500 cities in the state, leaving about 150,000 people displaced. Floods have destroyed roads and bridges in several cities, triggering landslides and leaving a path of destruction. Lula's measure asks Congress to declare a public calamity in the state, which would authorize extra government spending with no need to comply with a spending cap stipulated by fiscal rules approved last year. Expenses and tax waivers related to the state's recovery will also not be counted in the government's fiscal result under the measure. According to local weather forecaster Met Sul Meteorologia, weather conditions improved on Monday but showers are expected to return at lower volumes this week and could pick up again between May 10 and 15. Rio Grande do Sul Governor Eduardo Leite has emphasized that the death toll could still substantially increase as rescue workers gain access to more regions. Japan and India on Saturday decried remarks by President Joe Biden, describing them as xenophobic countries that do not welcome immigrants, which the president said during a campaign fundraising event earlier in the week. Japan said Biden's judgment was not based on accurate understanding of its policy, while India rebutted the comment, defending itself as the world's most open society. Biden grouped Japan and India as xenophobic countries, along with Russia and China, as he tried to explain their struggling economies, contrasting the four with the strength of the U.S. as a nation of immigrants. Japan is a key U.S. ally, and both Japan and India are part of the Quad a U.S.-led informal partnership that also includes Australia encountering increasingly assertive China in the Indo-Pacific. Just weeks ago, Biden hosted Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on an official visit as the two leaders restated their unbreakable alliance and agreed to reinforce their security ties in the face of China's threat in the Indo-Pacific. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also made a state visit to Washington last year when he was welcomed by business and political leaders. The White House said Biden meant no offense and was merely stressing that the U.S. was a nation of immigrants, saying he had no intention of undermining the relationship with Japan. French bakers cooked the world's longest baguette on Sunday at 140.53 meters, reclaiming a record for one of the nation's best-known emblems taken by Italy for five years. The baguette, about 235 times longer than the traditional one, was made in Serene in the suburb of Paris during an event for the French Confederation of Bakers and Pastry Chefs. The previous longest baguette measuring 132.62 meters was baked in the Italian city of Como in June 2019. To better that, the French bakers began kneading and shaping the dough at 3 a.m. before putting it in a specially built slow-moving oven on wheels. After the baguette was approved by the Guinness World Records judge, one of the bakers, Anthony Arigo, said, Everything has been validated. We are all very happy to have beaten this record and that it was done in France. Part of the baguette, which had to be at least 5 centimeters thick throughout, was cut and shared with the public. The rest was to be given to homeless people. According to the official regulation, the traditional French baguette must be about 60 centimeters long, be made from wheat flour, water, salt and yeast only, and weigh about 250 grams. The answer for yesterday is A, prolong. The operation could prolong his life by two or three years. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Boeing faces new inquiry over 787 inspection doubts. Number one, falsify. Chuan Gai, Wei Zhao. The charges against him include fraud, bribery, and falsifying business records. Number two, internally, Nei Bu De. The country stepped up internal security. Number three, thrust, Meng Tui, Chong. He tends to thrust himself forward too much. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's it for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Wei Li, your host. I'll see you next time.